the first thing that happened after he was killed was that J. Edgar Hoover, the director of the FBI, said, within minutes, said, Lee Harvey Oswald was the assassin. He acted alone. There was no conspiracy. Mm -hmm. I've been a defense lawyer. I had an office in East Harlem representing the poor people, blacks, Hispanics, and others who were disenfranchised. And for 10 years, I've been doing that. And I knew that there is no way to say when someone is killed that within minutes, there was no conspiracy, especially when it's the president. There were a lot of people who wanted President Kennedy to die, obviously, right. uh, different political forces and others. And how can one say before any investigation that one person did it alone? Even if you are certain that all the shots came from one place, how do you know the guy? We, he killed the president. How do you know that that man had not met with others, others had not inspired him, given him money, had gotten a weapon from him, et cetera? All of those things have to be looked into. So the statement by Hoover that Oswald acted alone was a political statement, not a statement based upon investigation. That was the first thing. The okay. second thing is that if, when we saw later on the Zapruder film, Abraham Zapruder was a, uh, a guy who, was, who lived in Dallas, and he was up there on the grassy knoll overlooking the uh, the area where the president was coming yeah. to Dealey Plaza in Dallas. Had his, had his little 8-millimeter camera with him. He had an 8-millimeter Bell and Howell camera with him. That's right. And he filmed the assassination. And when the bullet hit the president in the head, the fatal shot, he was driven backward and to his left. And, of course, the government was saying that Oswald, who was behind the president on the sixth floor of this Texas School Book Depository building, had fired the shot. Well, how did the bullet come from the back and pull him backward into the into the path of which the bullet came. It didn't make any sense. Two-thirds of those people in Dealey Plaza, the court, even those who test, many of those who testified before the Warren Commission were questioned later by the Dallas Police, Sheriff's Department, or the FBI, said the shots came, at least one shot came from behind that wooden fence, including those up on the railroad bridge in front of the president, including S.M. Holland, who worked for the Dallas Sheriff's Department for a while, and uh, was up there with his buddies to make sure that nobody would throw anything down from that bridge on the president. He was there in a semi-quasi-official capacity. They all ran to the area behind the fence. They all said, we heard the shots, looked there, we saw puffs of smoke coming from behind that wooden fence. The shot had been fired from there, ran over there to try to find the assassin. So the story that Lee Harvey Oswald, on the sixth floor of the book depository behind the president, was the lone assassin, was obviously not a true statement. And one of the things, Mark, over the years that, that, that I've weighed, I, th I think assassinations by whacked-out people, by crazy people, generally they try to get as close to their target as possible. You know, even some of the failed assassination attempts, they're right there. And they, you know, they just, they don't think about getting arrested. I don't think they care. But conspiracies are organized, and they're done from afar. Those people who are required to do the shooting, they don't want to get caught. They want to escape. They want to take off. And, you know, the, the JFK assassination, to me, has all the makings of an organized conspiracy. Maybe that triangular shoot that we've heard so much about. But I, I have never stopped thinking that that it wasn't done by a bigger group. I just don't understand exactly who that group was. And I'm sure over the years you've, you've come up with your own thoughts. Well, you know, the, um, there was a group within the CIA, a top-secret organization not even known to many people in the CIA. It was run by a man named Sidney Gottlieb. All of this is confirmed. Part of it is the Church Committee, United States Senate investigation, other work that's been done, and he's admitted all these things are true. Gottlieb ran an organization within the CIA which planned assassinations of heads of state, not in the United States, but outside of the United States at that point. He, he smuggled uh, various weapons into various countries to kill heads of state. He did that personally. It's all absolutely documented. Do you know who provided all of the credentials for the Secret Service in Dealey Plaza in Dallas for Ken Kennedy's visit there? For November 22nd and 23rd, that, would get, sa that yeah. same group. That group, yeah. That group provided all the credentials. How important was that? After the shots were fired, 
a Dallas police officer, Joe Marshall Smith, he testified before the Warren Commission, was told that he was just he wasn't on duty. He was just there watching. And he ran up to the wooden fence. He drew his gun. He was certain that the person who killed the president was behind that wooden fence. And he saw a man coming out. He pointed his gun out at him. And the man said, one second. And he took out his credentials. He had Secret Service credentials. The man who had fired, this the police officer, Joe Marshall Smith, had caught the assassin. But he had Secret Service credentials. And, oh. and so at that point, two men came out of the book depository building. They didn't work there. A weapon had been placed there on the sixth floor. It had been planted. Who did it? Two men came out, and they were stopped by police, and they flashed their Secret Service credentials. So they were allowed to go. The Secret Service announced later that day that every Secret Service agent in Dallas was in the motorcade. There was nobody on the ground. So the person behind the fence, the two people come out of the book depository building after the weapon had been planted there, were all people who were not Secret Service but had been given mm-hmm. the credentials by the special group within the CIA. Mark, why would they want to take Kennedy out? Was he that bad to them? Was he that dangerous to them? You know, well, why wouldn't they wait? You know, he was coming up for re-election. Yeah. Probably would have won. I think the... the the nation loved him. But w- why did they have to take him out? Well, he was, he was doing a few things they didn't like. Uh, he, the only war we had going at that time was Vietnam. It was the CIA's effort. The CIA played a major part in organizing and orchestrating that war, and he was ending it. He said in September of 63 that he was withdrawing 1,000 advisors. We had 18,000 advisors there. He was withdrawing 1,000 and then in November, he again withdrew another thousand and said by the end of next year, every American would be out of there. Of course, after he was killed, we ended up with 500,000 troops. Mm-hmm. More than that, though, they were concerned about the fact <clears throat> that Kennedy knew that they had lied to him on numerous occasions, including the Bay of Pigs invasion. And he fired Alan Dulles, who had been the director of the CIA, fired him and and decided that he was going to dissolve the Central Intelligence Agency because it had become a policy-making group, an operational group. And as Harry Truman said, it's an interesting article in the New York Times. President Truman had written one month to the day, published one month to the day after the president was assassinated, December 22, 1963. He said the CIA is a danger to America. It has become an operational and policy-making group. And it is a dangerous, and that's, he, he said, I set up the CIA, but only for the purpose of looking at intelligence information from all the agencies and bringing a report to me. That was supposed to be their job. He said they've gone far beyond that. They've undermined our democracy. They're a danger to America. That's the man who set up the CIA the day, a month to the day after the president was killed in the New York Times. But above all, John Kennedy was going to dissolve the CIA form a new intelligence organization with his brother, Robert, who then was the attorney general, uh, in charge of that. He was going to resign as attorney general and run this new intelligence organization, which was going to gather intelligence and stop the operations. Mm-hmm. How far have they come since that day? The CIA has its own Air Force. When I was young, I was in the Army during World War II. I was only 18 at the end of the war. And we had the Army Air Force, the Navy Air Force. Everybody had an Air Force in the United States. And then later on, it was decided to consolidate them all into the United States Air Force. That's right. So we had a single Air Force. Now we have another one. We have the CIA Air Force, and they brag that their drones kill more people in, in, the, in Afghanistan, Pakistan, etc., than does the United States Air Force. They're a rival to the United States Air Force. They've become operational completely, and they've become policymaking. It's the fourth branch of government. All the, when you think about the greatest generation ever, the founders of this nation, the most in, intricate work that they did in putting together a constitution and developing three branches of the government, executive, legislative, judicial, and how they're all related to each other. They have to work cooperatively. They will work in checks and balances. I mean, one, one section of the House has to declare war. Another one provides the funding. Two separate groups. Uh, the president has to administer the war. It was an incredible 
operation these guys came up with. It was world-shaking, and it still is a message and a lesson for the rest of the world. Now we have the CIA, which has become the fourth branch of government. It, the, the, nobody in Congress who votes to give them a budget has the faintest idea where that money is going. They're not allowed to know. Uh, but it was he wanted to do away with the CIA, and that, that is what concerns them the most. Just imagine if the CIA was disbanded and there was a new organization take its place, all the things that the CIA had done would be come under scrutiny and no, no longer be covered up. And instead of doing what Kennedy wanted, when Lyndon Johnson took over, he appointed the Warren Commission. It's actually called the President's Commission on the Assassination of President Kennedy. The chairman of it was the Chief Justice of the United States, Earl Warren. But who was on the commission? Alan Dulles. Oh. He's the person who had been fired by President Kennedy. He hated Kennedy. Yeah, he, he was fired by Kennedy. And the lying to the president is appointed by the new president to tell the American people the truth about who killed President Kennedy. And he was, it should have been called the Dulles Commission. Warren rarely showed up at meetings. Dulles ran that commission, and I knew that at the time because I read when, as soon as the documents came out, the 26 volumes published by the commission, he was there all the time. He was, he was the power. And later on, I brought actions under the Freedom of Information Act and got their top secret memos about it, about how they conducted their meetings, etc. <clears throat> and it's clear that they went, the CIA went to President Johnson, but above all went to Earl Warren and said, Lee Harvey Oswald was a lone assassin. We're sure of that. You don't even have to investigate. So they didn't. Is it true that a lot of witnesses to the assassination died early? Is that true or is that a, is that a myth? That's true. Now, I don't know if they were. Uh, I, uh, and in last word, I actually point out the people who died. And one of the m most remarkable people, and you would think it would have been a huge story at the time, was Dorothy Kilgallen. She was on What's My Line. She was That's a major right. journalist. Uh, she was a very famous person. She called me and said, I want to meet with you. And she said, I'm going to break open the Kennedy assassination. I know there was a conspiracy. I have. And she got Jack Ruby's testimony before it was, when it was top secret. She called me, and we met. And, we met. <clears throat> and she said, we're doing very dangerous work. I said, do you think so? She said, yes. And she gave me a, a name, Robin. She gave herself another name. When we call each other, let's only call from cell phones, and let's use these, these fake names. So they won't, because I'm sure my phone's been tapped. I'm sure your phone has been tapped all along. So she did that, and then we met, talked one more, uh, one more, one last time we talked, and she said, I'm going to Dallas, and when I come back, I will have what I need. I'm going to break this thing wide open. She went to Dallas, came back, and died the next day. And I uh, talked to her husband. 52 uh, years old, something like that. Yeah, she? they said that she was drinking and took an overdose of pills, but... Um, and, and uh, actually, true, when I met her, we always had a cocktail. That's true. She did drink a bit. But uh, she was always in control of everything that she was doing. And that's uh, – she, uh, her husband, Dick Colmar, uh, was uh, – I went to talk with him, and I said, did she leave any papers or anything? And he said, I know she was killed because of what she was doing. Oh, my God. And I'm not going to – have anybody else killed, and I don't want to talk ever about this again. Ironically, a bit, Mark... A little later, of, he committed suicide. Now, what did Johnson know, in your opinion, Lyndon Johnson? When he was interviewed after the... Uh, of course, it was called the President's Commission. He set up the commission. Uh, he was interviewed by Walter Cronkite when his book came out, and they were talking about that, and because Cronkite was a big, strong supporter of the Warren Commission, always had been, Mm -hmm. And he was sure that Lyndon Johnson agreed with him, and he said something about the Warren Commission. And Lyndon Johnson said, I always thought there was a conspiracy. That was the president of the United States. And they, CBS, it was a CBS interview, and they knocked that part out. But the New York Times reporter, a New York Times reporter was present during the interview when it was being taped. And he wrote a major story in the New York Times saying this is what Lyndon Johnson said, and nobody ever denied it. They didn't put it on CBS. But the reporter had heard him say those things. So uh, I don't know. I, don't, I'm, I never was one of those who suspected Lyndon Johnson of being involved in the assassination, although 
<laughs> we know he certainly benefited from it. But uh, and he appointed the commission. But it, it, he never believed the story, and he said he never believed the Warren Commission story. And maybe he had knowledge that something might happen. What do you think? I'm sorry. And maybe he had knowledge that something was going to happen to Kennedy. He may have. He certainly knew after it was over what the problem was. Uh, he went from Kennedy's policy of withdrawing. We had 18,000 advisors in September. He withdrew 1,000 in, in Vietnam. They were called advisors then. We had, he withdrew 1,000 in September, 1,000 more in November. Said soon they're all going to be out of there. And we're down to 16,000. As soon as Lyndon Johnson came in, he reversed the policy. 54,000 Americans died after that. What about Oswald? Who the heck was this guy, if he was indeed what he said he was, a patsy? Oswald was picked as the patsy early on before they made the plan. This is, this is the important thing about the Mexico City operation run by David Phillips, saying that Oswald went to Mexico City September, October of 63. How come the CIA in September of 1963 was setting up this plot to blame Oswald for an, an event which wasn't going to take place for several more weeks from then? I mean, in September of 63, nobody knew that Kennedy was going to be killed uh, in November, except the people who planned it. And that who was, planned it, absolutely, and knew his itinerary and everything else. Yeah. Who killed the cop, J.D. Tippett? I don't know, except I do know a witness named Aquila Clemens, who I interviewed on film uh, in Dallas, said she was a witness. She saw two men come toward him, heard shots fired, and then one waved to the other to go one way, and he went the other way. She said two people were involved in killing Tippett. It's interesting because the shells found at the scene showed that different two different weapons had been used, so she was confirmed in that respect, and she said when she showed pictures of Oswald, she said he wasn't either of those two men. So that's all we know. We know that the Warren Commission said Oswald did that as well, but there's evidence that there were two people involved. Aquila Clemens was never questioned by the Warren Commission, and they knew about her, and they never questioned her. And in the Warren Commission report on the rumors and speculation, they said that rumors of this woman exist, but she doesn't exist, except I had a film of her. An interview, which is in the film called the Rush to Judgment, and it's been shown all around the country, all around the world. And there she is talking about this, and the Warren Commission says she doesn't exist. Huh. So they have, have, um, they have their sets of facts, and they have nothing to do with reality. And that's, as you said earlier uh, in your promo, that uh, there's, there's no question that when the government takes a position and doesn't want you to know what the story is, you don't know. You're not One of the things that the CIA did, of course, was to issue these directives, and I published them for the first time in Last Word, telling how to destroy me and how to destroy other authors and anyone who was looking into the situation. They wrote book reviews, which would be published in news newspapers throughout the country. They told the reporters how to deal with us, what to say, what questions to ask, directives to their assets in the news media, which were then followed. Uh, it's amazing, with all of that activity, Rush to Judgment, which was the first serious work on, on the uh, Kennedy assassination, the first book I ever wrote, right. uh, became the number one best-selling, New York Times number one best-selling book in America in 1966, and the next year it became the number one best-selling New York Times number one best-selling paperback. Millions of people were really interested in this subject, even though the government was saying, don't, don't listen, we have our assets trying to destroy him, and and... This, this is an area where the CIA is prohibited from participating. And, uh, I, and I, in, in, in last word, at the very end, I call upon the president to stop the CIA from its illegal activities, including efforts to suppress books. We used to have three branches of government. Now we have four, and the fourth is the CIA. It's more powerful than the other branches. It pays no attention to them. When the CIA has been ordered by a federal court or by a Senate committee to produce documents, they burn them and destroy them. They're, they're a very powerful group, and they're more powerful than the other three branches of government. They're not cooperative with them. There's no interfacing with them. The, the Congress is supposed to determine the budget for the CIA. Whatever the CIA asks, what they get, 
And nobody, there's not one member of Congress who can tell you where that money, what that money is used for. Nobody. There's no real oversight of anything the CIA does. It's the fourth branch of government. It's more powerful than the other three now. Mark, what do you think people would do if they truly understood the scope of this and what happened? Would they revolt? What would happen? Or has it been so long they would just simply say, I knew it, and move on? Well, I think probably the latter. And the fact is that it's not just the passage of time that has done this. The government was always terrified that the American people would, would take action if they knew what had taken place. Uh, they, they overestimate the ability of the American people to react. Uh, I don't think there would have been a revolt. There would have been no revolution. There would have been no Arab Spring in the United States where people would pour, millions would pour out in the streets. I don't think it was ever an issue. But I think the government feared that. And uh, the government does not want us to know what the facts are about any number of things that take place. And they have very intricate ways. They have unlimited amounts of money. It's our money, but it, they, they control it. They have unlimited amounts of money to do whatever they want. And we, we don't even know what the budget is of the CIA. We don't know what their plans are. As I said, they have their own Air Force now, the CIA Air Force. Mark, I've always told myself, follow the money, who benefits, you generally find your answers. In this particular case, even though Kennedy wanted to get us out of uh, Vietnam, was there a benefit here to this special group at the CIA? What was the long-range benefit here to do him in? Well, there are a couple of things. First of all, they wanted the war to continue. But above that, above and beyond that, as far as they were concerned, it was self-preservation. Kennedy was going to disband the CIA, form a new intelligence organization, and have his brother Robert resign as attorney general and direct that new organization. <clears throat> Who knows how much money that would have cost people or their reputations, or mm -hmm. maybe they would have gone to prison when a new person came in and looked at what they had been doing all of those years, that was the last thing that they wanted to have happen. Let's grab some phone calls here for you, Mark. Okay. We'll go to Bernie in Texas. Go ahead. Uh, hi, George. Thank you for taking my call. Sure uh, Mark Lane, you bring, you're an extremely uh, interesting guest. I was 13 years old when the assassination occurred, and I clearly remember where I was and the feelings I had. And I always thought the air stunk with conspiracy, and I still do. Uh, there was some statement about a set of records, and I don't know when this came up, whether it was during the Warren Commission or whether it was right after the assassination, probably the Warren Commission, but there was a set of records that was said to be sealed for 75 years, which in essence means that every witness would be dead by the time these records are unsealed. Earl Warren said that it was about not just records, it was basically all the investigations that was done right. by the Warren Commission, right. and he said it would not be available for 75 years. So doesn't that mean that every uh, credible witness would be dead, and uh, doesn't this also, or won't this also yeah. confirm a conspiracy in the next 27 years? Yeah, it also means that the people who killed the president would never be found because they'd be dead, too. They'll be gone years later. If it was merely a lone gunman, Mark, why suppress the information for 50 years, 75 you know, when years? I brought an action to get documents from the CIA and the FBI, and I brought it in before the United States District Court for the District of Columbia. Uh, the government, of course, strongly opposed it because of reasons of national security. And I said just what you just said, George. I said if one man did it alone, if that's their story, okay, if they say there's a conspiracy and they don't want us to know, that's one thing. But if they say one man did it alone, why are we suppressing evidence? Exactly. If Oswald did it, did it alone. Let's look at the evidence. What's the problem? And that's why, based upon your statement, which is the one that I had made before court, that's how we got tens of thousands of pieces of paper from the FBI, CIA. A lot of it was redacted. I'm sure there were other documents that they didn't know about, uh, that, that, we, that we didn't know about, that they never gave to us. But we got a wealth of information. We had kids from all over the country. At this house I had in Washington come there and go through these documents for months, uh, day and night, going through all of this stuff, and they found a lot of inf interesting information. And the, this was years later, 1975. And the reason that they gave us this stuff is the court ordered them to, and they didn't have any experts at that point. Was, was many years had passed since the assassination. Who knew what was important or how something could in, implicate something else? And so they just. Gave us, they, obviously, they kept out the stuff which would be 
that obviously uh, yeah. clear about their culpability, but for the rest of them, they weren't sure what little pieces of information were in there. It was like mining for gold, and we found a vast amount of information. And that was because the court said the same thing that you said, and I had said it also before the court, and that is, if one man did it alone, what's the secrecy? Give him the documents. Some say that the driver, a Secret Service driver, turned around and shot Kennedy. I don't see that in the slow-mo pics I've you seen. Do that, but I'll tell you what the Secret Service did. The Secret Service, there was not one Secret Service agent, not one, of all those in the motorcade who did the appropriate thing. Not one was assigned to Kennedy. The only one who did anything correctly was, well, there were two of them. One was the... Uh, Rufus Youngblood, who was in the car with Lyndon Johnson, when he heard the shot, he jumped onto, onto Johnson and knocked him onto the floor of the car, which is what the Secret Service was. Right, to, to cover right. him up. Assigned to Johnson. Yeah. Quinn Hill was on the running board of the follow-up car of the Secret Service. He ran and, and caught the president's car in order to save Jackie because he was assigned to Jackie. But the ones, everybody else was there for John Kennedy. And the driver of the car didn't turn around and shoot him, but he might as well have. He slowed the car almost to a complete stop. And then sitting alongside of him to his right in the passenger seat was a Secret Service agent whose job was to jump back there and knock Kennedy down and Protect cover him. him. Remember, yeah. it took 5.6 seconds from the first shot, which hit the president in the back, until the fatal shot. That's, a, that's an eternity for the Secret Service. They could have, first thing is speed up the car, get out of there. Second thing is the driver goes back there and jumps on the president. They didn't do any of those things. Every single Secret Service agent in that motorcade uh, now, who was assigned to Kennedy all, for some reason, took no action. And we know why. Uh, and I discussed this in, in last word, a whole section on Secret Service. The 11 members of the White House detail in months before the assassination opted out of that organization. They stayed with the Secret Service, but they were not part of the most elite group for which they'd been trained. And these were the most experienced, 11 most experienced members of the Secret Service weren't even in the White House detail at that point. And not one of them that, was, that remained in there took appropriate action. Abraham Bolden, who I interviewed, he was the first black person ever appointed to the White House detail. He was appointed by Kennedy and... Uh, and Kennedy chose him personally. Mm -hmm. He said that the racism was so bad in the Secret Service, uh, they called him the N-word and everything. Yeah, it was I believe so that. so bad that he just wanted to leave yeah. and go back to Chicago and work for the Secret Service there. He also said he heard them say over and over that they hated Kennedy. Kennedy had ruined America with his civil rights positions, and they would never take a bullet for him. They said that over and over. And when November 22nd, 1963 came, that's what they did. They did not take a bullet. They, they, they did not get the car out of the way. The Secret Service car following the president's car should have gone quickly to the right and protected him from the right because that's where they knew the shot came from. They took no action except to bring the car almost to a stop. The first shot was fired. He slowed it down. When the fatal shot was fired, hit the president. He stepped on the accelerator and got out of there. Mark Lane. I've wanted to talk with him for years. I'll be back with more as our special report on the JFK assassination continues.